David Brewster here with another Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is Take Your Pick. And I've actually had a lot of requests and messages about picking technique and picking exercises and, you know, um, how are you picking this example? Or can you show, you know, some picking, alternate picking exercises? And I've had a lot of picking questions. And then I've also had a few viewers out there ask about my pick collection, you know, that's been sitting here back behind me. Um, and I'm pretty proud. I mean, it's slowly growing, but I'm pretty proud of my, uh, my pick collection. I've been saving and, and collecting picks for a very long time. So I am going to talk briefly about that, but we are going to talk about picking and some different approaches and ideas as far as alternate picking and just, you know, picking the strings of the guitar in general. So here we go. All right, and I guess just to kind of get the pick collection out of the way so we can actually get to work, um, I have had, you know, some people ask, like, what picks do you have back there? Can you show us, you know, your pick collection? And I've been saving and collecting picks ever since I was a teenager. You know, I just thought picks were just unique and interesting. There's different colors and graphics and materials. And I know the first pick I ever bought, and I thought, wow, I think I'm going to start collecting picks. Uh, it was made of stone, and I remember I was in a music store, I saw it. It was like 2 or $3 or something, which at the time I remember thinking, man, that's a lot of money for, you know, a guitar pick. I don't know. But I finally, you know, threw down 3 bucks or whatever it was, and I bought it. And uh, I still have it, actually. Uh, well, here's a photo of it right here. So even though I'm older now and I'm not a teenager anymore, uh, I'm still obsessed with picks. And honestly, I know it's, uh, here I'm sharing this on, on the internet so everybody's gonna know, but one of the first things I do when I go to a music store, not necessarily like Guitar Center, but you know, like a mom and pop shop or a specialty shop or a little boutique shop, is I make the rounds and then I always scope out the picks, you know, before I leave or whatever. I'm always looking like, do you guys have anything weird or, you know, there's a lot of uh, picks out there I kind of have in mind that I'd like to have. I just haven't picked them up or ordered them or bought them yet. Um, but anyway, here's a quick video of just a scan through, you know, the pick collection. So you can kind of see what's, you know, what's sitting on the wall here behind me. Okay, now let's get to work. So um, there, there seems to be a lot of attention and questions surrounding picking. You know, um, how are you picking this example? Or can you, you know, reveal some of your secrets? And I don't really have secrets necessarily. Um, maybe some insight and some kind of, you know, exercises and some things you can try. But one thing I would highly recommend that everybody watching this does is watch guitarists play, whether you're watching them live and in person or you're on YouTube watching clips and live footage or outtakes or whatever. Um, but really watch, you know, watch the fret hand and notice 
you know, anything unusual or different, you know, maybe you're watching somebody that's influenced by Hendrix and they're fretting with their thumb and they're, you know, using it uh, for melodic parts or chords and rhythm. Um, or maybe they're just doing something unusual, you know, with their fret hand. But then definitely watch the pick hand, you know, like a hawk. Like really try to focus on, you know, what's happening there. Like how are they muting and, you know, how do they have their hand positioned? And if you watch enough guitarists, which believe me, I've, I've been paying attention to guitarists ever since I was a little kid, but I've noticed everybody does it differently. And um, those players out there that kind of have a similar you know, hand position or a picking technique, they may have just borrowed, you know, something that they saw, one of their influences or a guitarist they admire, you know, and think of certain players, like think of, you know, guys like, uh, say, Paul Gilbert, you know, Paul Gilbert kind of holds his hand more or less like this, and he used to, um, you know, hold the pick between his thumb and index finger, and the pick actually used to kind of you know, push on the side of his index finger, and then he slowly changed that over the years. But when you see his hand, it basically looks something like that. Now, when you watch someone like Warren D. Martini or George Lynch or some of these other guitarists I've uncovered and uh, discussed in these lessons, you'll see that they they sometimes fan their fingers out like this. You know, and it's kind of unusual to see. And I think a, it's kind of a visual thing. But then b, I believe they're actually benefiting from having their fingers fanned out like that for muting and they'll, they'll kind of hit things a little bit differently with that fan finger technique. And, uh, you know, if you notice like Marty Friedman, you know, he holds his wrist and his hand in a very odd way. You know, Eddie Van Halen, when he's tremolo picking, you know, his hand kind of floats up here like this, which is very unorthodox and very hard to control, but he does it, you know, like a master, which is inspiring, but it's also frustrating because I never quite got the hang of, of tremolo picking his way. I kind of do it my own way. But you'll notice like Steve Morris, John Petrucci, you know, players like that, they'll plant a finger on the face of the guitar while they're picking. And everybody kind of has a little different approach, you know, the way they do it. So one thing I'd recommend is, you know, watch players that you really like. And then another thing you could try, you know, just to really hone in and really notice like what you're doing when you pick the guitar is put a mirror in front of you or practice in front of a mirror and maybe angle yourself or the mirror to where you can kind of see, you know, from the side and you can kind of see head on and really watch, you know, what you do. Or you could also film yourself, you know, with like a, you know, a smartphone or a camera and just really watch footage of yourself playing. And I have to admit, you know, making these videos for late night lessons, I'm noticing things that I do that I never really noticed before because I'm filming myself more than I ever have, you know, uh, on this channel. So there's little things you can pick up, you know, just really watching other people and then also watching yourself too. So remember that. An area of picking that's very difficult for a lot of people, I think, to kind of wrap around their head and also just to get a feel for it, you know, on the guitar is known as inside and outside picking. And I have to discuss this before we talk about anything as far as, you know, alternate picking or speed licks or anything like that. You have to understand physically what's happening. So when you play like a minor pentatonic scale, you know, the minor pentatonic is a very guitar friendly scale because it, you know, it happens or occurs across the strings kind of in a box, you know, formation. And you have two notes per string typically. So that's really easy because on each string you'll pick down and up, you know, all the way through the, the scale. But when you get into like major scales and minor scales and modes and harmonic minor and melodic minor and all this stuff, you'll have typically three note per string, you know, fingerings and scale positions. And that creates a problem, especially if you're picking everything with strict alternate picking. So, you know, just think of like a one octave, I'm just gonna put this in the key of E minor right here, but just think of a one octave uh, E natural minor or E Aeolian scale right here. So right there, if we do, you know, strict alternate picking, you've got down, up, down, up. And right there, that's known as outside picking because we did a downstroke on the A and an upstroke on the D. So you're doing this. You know, you're doing down on a lower string and then an upstroke on a higher string, and that's tricky. Now if you continue through that scale, because now we've started with an upstroke on the D, and then down, and then up, and then down, when you go to the G string, 
Now you're doing inside picking right there between the, the D and the G string. And that's where you have an upstroke on the D and a downstroke on the G. And it almost kind of feels like your pick's you know, trapped between those strings. But that's what happens uh, with the three note per string scale with alternate picking. It's going to move between inside and outside picking the whole time. So for some of you out there, that's why it feels weird, you know, when you're picking more. You know, your, your pick hand's going to kind of feel like it's out of sync, but it's actually doing what it's supposed to. It just feels funky because you either have this situation, you know, outside, or you have this situation, which is inside, right? So that's a good thing to practice is just sit there and really target, you know, down, up, down, up, down. tough you know to really make sure you know you're picking everything precise and accurate and you're using that strict alternate picking technique now if we extend that scale into a two octave fingering uh, which I did uncover that in the minor scale mastery you know series of uh, scales and tails um, but in that episode I kind of unlocked the scale that I'm going to talk about but now we're going to really focus more on what we're picking so now we're going to do this <laughs> And there I'm basically still, you know, down, up, 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 down. And I'm beginning and ending that two octave scale with a downstroke. But you'll see if you really analyze what you're playing, you'll see inside and outside picking happening all the way through that. And that's a big challenge. You know, if you haven't really thought about what you're doing when you pick, now's the time to start thinking about it. And for some of you watching this, you may already know this, and you're like, oh, this is easy. But uh, if you already know the concept, then yeah, this is easy. But if you don't know the concept, you know, your brain might be imploding right now, like, oh my gosh. Because um, I know when I first learned this, I didn't really think about it like that. And then I really started to kind of pay attention and notice, like, okay, am I doing a downstroke or an upstroke? And then what am I doing? All right, here's a picking exercise. I call this the in and out exercise. And we're gonna basically just target the first six notes of E minor right here. And that's what it sounds like. One more time. It's a very basic sequence, but it really challenges, you know, that fretting hand and picking hand to work together because we're ascending and slowly kind of sequencing, you know, that first, uh, you know, that six note pattern. And then once we reach the top, we just kind of cruise right back down to the beginning again. So right there, I kind of had my hand fanned out, you know, not, not to the extreme of say like Morin or, you know, George Lynch, but I did have my fingers fanned out a little bit. And mainly I was doing that um, unconsciously, but I was mainly doing that so I could mute those top two strings I wasn't using there, you know, the B and the high E. You know, I could kind of feel you know, like the side of my picking hand here and the side of my pinky kind of coming in contact with those strings just to keep things muted and quiet, which is really important. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take that sequence that I put there on the A and the D strings and I'm going to relocate it to the, the D and the G mainly so we have this little highway or this little area we can look at and we're going to cruise up the scale we're going to basically cruise up uh, a natural minor on two strings all the way until we hit the octave right there so we're going to use alternate picking all the way through and i'm just going to play it slowly i'm not trying to impress anybody i'm just trying to influence and hopefully help some of you out there so i'm not going to fly through it you know trying to wow you know listen to how fast that is now we're looking for accuracy and we're looking for articulation you know um we're not worried about impressing the neighbors yet now after you learn it you can practice it and start playing it faster and you can invite your friends and your dog and everybody else in and like check this out you know but in the beginning go slow like don't worry about speed worry about accuracy and here we're going to take that same sequence and just do this <laughs> same pattern but we're just basically on a different set of strings so now we're going to take that now move up to the next position of E natural minor and you'll have this 
move to the next position and you'll have this. Next position. Next position. The next position. Next position. If you go up one more uh, position, you're basically an octave higher than where we started. Now if I put all that together. Now right there you could experiment, you know, with something like that, with that exercise. You know, there I kind of had my fingers, you know, kind of separated or kind of fanned out. I didn't have it all balled up, you know, like someone like, say, Paul Gilbert. Um, but you can actually practice it that way and compare and see which way do I actually prefer, you know, to play this. And I would recommend try a lot of different ways. You know, like the Marty Friedman approach might hurt your wrist, but you might actually find some interesting things to do there. In uh, the George Lynch, you know, three for all that I just did recently, there was a lick in there, and, and in the footage of him playing it, you could see he was he was picking like a whole bunch of upstrokes, you know, at one point. And when I saw that, I was like, man, that's so weird. But it had a different sound, you know. And I think that's kind of what he was doing was just trying to, you know, hit something a little bit differently. You know, it caught my ear and it caught my attention simply because. There was like a whole bunch of upstrokes happening. That's gonna wrap this rant up, which my rants are pretty harmless, you know, compared to some rants I see on the internet. Some people out there are really harsh, but I'm a friendly ranter. You know, I'm just I'm just talking about picks and picking. And speaking of picks, these are uh, the brand new uh, late night lessons picks uh, from Hawk Picks, and uh, I've got a little stash over here. I've been using Hawk Picks for the last oh like last four years or so, and uh, I'm endorsed with Hawk Picks. Uh, these are made over in England. Bruja's my nickname, by the way. But uh, these are made over in England. I've got a little stash. There's some like different materials and different colors. Um, but I love these picks. Um, honestly, I've been using these for about four years, and these are the only picks I use. I do have like a little stash. They're actually hiding in this uh, Stormtrooper here. And there's a whole bunch of different picks and stuff in here. There's, like, it's it's up to here in picks. But uh, I don't even reach for those picks anymore. There's all sorts of materials. There's gravity picks and a bunch of stuff in there. But I mainly just keep these, like, in a little, uh, you know, a little holder or whatever. And uh, I'm always using these. I, I basically just kind of stopped using everything else. And the main thing I've noticed is the way they react with the strings. They seem to kind of bounce off the string and it really seems to pop, you know, and you can hear it acoustically, you know, when you're not plugged in and you can definitely hear it on an acoustic guitar. Um, you know, if you kind of trade back and forth between a standard pick and one of these, you can really hear the tone and the enhancement. And it's basically the material, you know, this is kind of an ebony composite they have an ivory composite as well, and there's just something about the way it, you know, connects and contacts with the string. It just sounds different. It's got a really good feel. You can get different beveled, you know, options. You can have the pick beveled different ways to kind of hit, you know, the strings and have a little different feel. And the other big thing, aside from the way they, they kind of enhance or improve the sound and the tone, aside from that is they last a very long time. And I know, um, I'm not going to mention brands, but the previous pick that I used uh, for a very long time, um, I was going through them so fast. You know, I'd, I'd you know, have a day of lessons and I'd teach and I noticed like I was throwing picks away at the end of the day. Where it's like, well, these are all worn out, you know, and I'd throw them away. Or I'd play a gig somewhere and I was pitching the picks, you know, that I'd used. And... Uh, as soon as I got these, I noticed these last 10, maybe 20 times longer than any normal pick out there. Um, as far as the tip and the point, you know, because these are kind of a sharp, you know, jazz, you know, jazz size with that sharp point. And as soon as that point's gone, then the pick's usually done, you know, but these, they last forever. And I've never broke one. Um, you know, it's definitely, 
you know, it's not plastic. It's something else, you know, entirely. But these are great picks. So if you're looking for something different, they're a little pricey. I mean, these aren't a quarter or whatever. But um, they last a long time. They feel great. They sound great. And like I said, I, I really don't use anything else these days. But uh, there's my little uh, hawk, you know, uh, my little hawk uh, testimonial there. But yeah, I mean, I'm a fan and I might as well share, you know, uh, the news about these picks because they're made over in England. A lot of my friends here in the States, you know, they have no idea. They're like, what, what picks are those? You know, where'd you get those? So um, hawk picks and they're amazing. But anyway, uh, that's going to wrap this rant, so leave some feedback and some comments, you know, let me know if you got anything from this, and uh, please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it. Thank you.